Okay, good day and uh, welcome to Gaming with Colonel. I'm Sean Moran. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Bobby Lee by Columbia Games, uh, designed by Tom Danglish. And I've got the third edition. Um, so I got this a year ago Christmas. In fact, I was... Uh, <laughs> I... I was sick on Christmas Eve a year ago, um, and I didn't have COVID, but I had to get the test, and you still had to isolate, you know, for four days or whatever it was, right? And I was lucky enough to get Bobby Lee and uh, uh, Bordino, and get this, I also got victory uh, in Europe. So for those four days, I was um, in the basement playing games, and this was one of them. Um, so it was, despite having to, to isolate, it was, uh, I made the best of it, if you know what I mean. So, um, this is like my fourth or fifth time playing this. Uh, I recently did the, the the video about Sam Grant, which is another one that I, I recently got. Um, I, I, you know, I think I said that I probably uh, uh, favored this one a bit more, maybe just because of its its chrome. I, I would say this one has been uh, more enjoyable, but I will I will definitely play Sam Grant again because I just I I I really enjoy these games. Um, but if I, I guess I had to choose one, I would probably choose this one over over that. So in this particular game, what I did is I did the 1863 scenario. So if you don't know, you can play uh, different scenarios. Uh, they even have a 1861, two, three, and four, or you can combine them all to do to do the grand campaign, which which could be quite long uh, if you did that. It uh, this one particularly took me uh, a couple of days to play off and on throughout the day on the weekend. Um, so why don't we have a quick look at what we've got going on on the map here? Uh, from down here in the corner, you've got uh, Fort Monroe, uh, North Folk. Uh, Yorktown, uh, West Point, Richmond, Petersburg, Fredericksburg, uh, this is called Acquia Landing, I'll just do a couple of quick ones, here's Washington DC, and of course there's Abe Lincoln in there, and Alexandria, up here we've got Baltimore, uh, ch -ch -ch. what else do we got over here that would be relevant, Harper's Ferry, New Market, uh, Moore's Field. And if you don't know, the whole objective of the game is to get uh, uh, victory points, which you get by taking the key uh, cities uh, with, uh, with the, the numbers on them, and you move across a victory point line. In this particular scenario, the, the score starts over here. Um, the Confederates actually get a, a point every, every turn for just, you know, not losing, um, and then you get points for for taking those uh, those numbered uh, cities, and you move along. and And right now I'm at uh, a stalemate uh, for the uh, favoring the Confederates right now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the sequence um, and how the so the game flows. Uh, and then we'll get into that turn. So wh what you're supposed to do is each, to determine who goes first, is each uh, player is supposed to um, activate leaders, and the one who's activated the most leaders um, basically is the one who you know gets to go first. Now, I can't really do that myself, just playing by myself, so what I do is I just roll. So I would take the, the blue dice or the Union, and um, the gray, obviously, are the, uh, the Confederates. And look at that, it's actually Confederacy 11 and Union 10, so the Confederates will go first when we play that. Um, okay, so once you've activated your leaders, so um, in this case, let's assume that I'm going to activate uh, Davis, because I'll probably do some strategic moves or whatnot. And uh, I'm probably going to move with uh, Bobby Lee. Definitely going to do this over here, probably with uh, Longstreet. So you would activate your leaders, and then you would do your movement. So on the blocks themselves, let's just grab a block. Okay, we got to remember that this guy's at strength one when I put him back. But it's a here's a you know typical block by Columbia Games, and you've got your strength four three two. And you've got your firepower F2, meaning if you roll a 1 or a 2 on uh, on the 4 dice, if he was at strength 4, 
then you would score hits. And the bottom left, of course, is the movement, which is two. So I'm going to put that back. So uh, why don't we use that? Uh, how about this as an example over here? So let's say I've, I've activated uh, Bobby Lee and the guys in this hex. You don't have to move them all, but let's say I want to move a couple. I'll take an infantry unit and I'll move him two, one, two, um, you know, down this uh, road. If you're moving across woods, you've got to immediately stop. So there's things like that about hex sides. If you're going to go across different hex sides, you, you, you'll have to stop. Uh, there's bridges to get you across rivers. Uh, what else here? You can do extended movement where you can roll to, to move like one extra hex. And I think it's if you roll a one, two, a three, you, you, you get to do it, but you actually have to take a step loss. Um, and if you get uh, four, five, or six or something like that, then it's you can do it, but uh, and no step loss. So that's essentially movement. Um, right on the back of the rules, which is what I was always going to, you'll see uh, train effects. And it says there, attack, retreat, reinforce, move. So it'll tell you, you know, what... You can move unlimited blocks uh, across hex sides, except if you're attacking. So if you're attacking, then it gives you clear. You can move four uh, across a clear hex side. Uh, forest, you can only move three. A bridge, you can move three. Marsh, two. Gap, which is a gap in... Um, let's see if I can find one for you. A gap in these uh, ridges or mountains, you can only move... Uh, two. And that, of course, is with the weather being clear. Uh, and for this last turn, it's going to be mud. So you can see the reductions there for the same hex sides. And you can see the other stuff, too, for reinforcing. If you're going to reinforce uh, guys into the battle hexes, it gives you what those limitations are. Um, yeah, and there's also some stuff there about foraging, because if you are out of supply, then hexes, certain hexes will allow you to supply a certain number of blocks. Um, and I think it's also leader dependent as well. So once you've done the movement, then you actually have to take a step loss with your with your leader, and your leader can move to whatever uh, his movement is. Um, so you can move him into the battle or move him to some other spot if you wanted to do that. Now, interesting to note, if you've got less than three blocks, you have what's known as a skirmish. So let's uh, let's have a little look here. So let's just, uh, for example, I'll just go like, let's say I go like this. I'm just going to remember where these are. So let's assume that I'm, I'm attacking as a union and I go in here and we only have two and two. So what would happen is the defender gets to roll first. He can roll two dice because there's two blocks, but he only hits on a one. The union could then take uh, their, their losses, if, if any, and then they can roll two dice. And it's, again, it's only a loss. Uh, it's only a loss if you roll a, a one. Now here's the thing, because it's this equal number of blocks, the Union has to retreat. If the Union had one more block and was attacking this, these two blocks, then the, the Confederacy would automatically have to retreat just because the Union attacked with more blocks. So that's interesting to note. So that's what goes on with, with skirmishes. Okay. Now, um... Battles very similar to how uh, Sam Grant goes, although I think I told you before about Sam Grant and it's uh, that, that enfilade fire, which you don't have in here. So it's the same, it's, it's, it's the typical battle board that, that Columbia has. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick setup of that. Okay, so here we are set up, we're on the battle board. Um, all I've really done, actually, I'll put these guys up to, to max strength just for fun. These are just people from the dead pile. Okay, uh, interesting to note that you get these trench systems in this game. Uh, based on year, you'll see it says 62 and 63 because I'm playing 1863. The, each side gets two of these trench systems. So when you're defending, you get to then decide where these go. So, um, what it, and the, the, the modifications are, you know, it's just a, uh, if you're attacking somebody in a trench, instead of having a, like if you've got a four-factor block, instead of rolling four dice, you can only roll three. Uh, there's also some effects for morale that you get to, I think you get to roll, uh, a mod, you get a modifier for your morale roll and that sort of thing. 
So the way battle starts, it starts actually with a morale check. If you've got anybody who's at, at strength one, you've got to roll. If you roll, I think it's a one, two, or three. It's again, you've uh, you you have to um, disengage, and uh, if you sorry, it's if you are engaged, you have to disengage and go to your reserve. So which is problematic because if you don't have anybody else in there, as soon as you've as soon as you leave one of your squares of battle here when you're engaged in your past past your battle line this is the battle line you force a route so if the enemy in this case is the confederacy is is here and all of a sudden you had to you know withdraw because of the morale roll then boom that would force a route everybody loses one and then has to retreat and the confederates would win so so morale is the first thing to do let's assume there is no morale pro issue and then after that it's it's movement or or fire and let me find something here now let me let me do this so in this case the confederates all have infantry so let's just assume i'm going to move to engage across the battle line okay and now something you can also do though from your reserve you can do what's called an outflanking move and uh and I think it's actually infantry and cavalry that can do this. And you have to roll, and again, I think you have to get like a four, five, or a six on the dice in order to do it. And if you do it, then then this the unit from the reserve can actually engage um, and actually and actually f uh, attack from because of it's an outflanking move. Even though this guy has moved and engaged, he can't fire, but this guy can. In which case, um, and I believe you roll at a. Uh, I believe you roll just add an F2, it's not even an F1. But if you, if you, and the, sorry, and if you're infantry, you can do another attack called melee, which I'll, I'll get into in a second. If you do not make the right roll to, to do the actually outflank, I think if you roll like a one, two, or three, then you actually lose a step and you go back to the reserve. So that's kind of an interesting rule. You want to check that out. So let's, let's assume I've engaged here. I go and boom, do this outflank, I roll. It's actually one, two, three. He actually loses a step because he didn't make the right roll, and he has to go back to the reserve. That ends the first attacker, let's say assuming the Confederates attacked, battle day. Now there's a chart over there. It says AD, 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 and then it says night AD. That's your battle tracking turn system. So the attacker, the Confederates in this case, have just attacked. That was their first turn. Now the, the uh, Union would go, and in this case, uh, we start first with this uh, artillery piece. Now, the, because the artillery is, has been engaged on its first turn, it can fire at F3, in which case it's got four dice. If I roll F3, one, two, or three, I actually rolled two threes and one one, so this would be, we would lose right down to, to one here. Um, and if uh, Seagull here, you know, he attacks at uh, F1, Two dice. Oh, he rolls a one. This would actually kill his confederate, and it would force a route. Everybody would lose a step and then have to retreat. And you'd have to follow the right retreat guidelines and hex sides to make sure that you can retreat. If you can't retreat because you'd have too many guys and you've, you've already maximized the hex sides, and you can't go into any adjacent vacant hexes, then you, you're basically eliminated is what happens. So that's kind of a typical uh, sort of battle thing that would go on there. And what happens is you go, you know, um, dawn, morning, afternoon, dusk, AD, 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 attacker, defender, attacker, defender, and then you get to night. And, uh, in a, and you actually have to have a leader, and I believe it's the attacker who has to have a leader in order to maintain the attack uh, if, it wants to, if he wants to go another complete day is what it is. Now, the other thing I want to mention about melees. So infantry can do melee. So whether you're attacking or defending, you can do it. You can choose to do it. And all it does is it gives you your F2 becomes an F3. So you roll. You can roll a 1, 2, or 3 to get a hit. If you roll a 6, you will lose a step. So it's a pretty good benefit for melee and for attacking, but obviously there's some risks because you're, you're doing a melee. Okay, that's... Um, oh, uh, and the other thing is at the end of the, the battle turn, you can always bring in reserves from... Uh, your adjacent hexes. So if you've got wherever the battle is, and I always put a marker down because I forget sometimes where the battle is, the adjacent hexes, you can then at the end of that battle turn, you know, in this case, do or, uh, dawn, you can then bring in reinforcements to your reserve 
who then can be used for the next battle turn, so after the, uh, the enemy's turn. So and that's about it in a nutshell for, for battle. Okay, let's uh, pause and have another view. Okay, so I'm going to play what will be my final couple of turns anyways, I guess, to see uh, who, if the, the Confederates just need one more point um, in order to get victory here. And it will depend on a couple of attacks. And the Union, to counter that, is going to have, probably have to attack and take something. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. So let's start off, we already did the roll for whose turn it went, so we'll say the Confederates go first, you know, for fun. We are, are we even going to activate Bobby Lee? I don't know. Uh, we're not going to activate Bobby Lee. We are going act, to activate Jefferson Davis. Okay. We've got mud turn, mud rules, so that means that. I'm going to try to take Yorkton over here, and in doing so, I, I am going to need to, uh, you can use your strategic, your supreme leader here, Jefferson, to actually do movement for attacks, and that's what I have to do because I lost the leader over there. So underneath mud rules to go from a clear hex side, I can put in I can put in two. Huh? That's not great. So, but I'll take the best two that I've got. See, you know what? This is terrible because it just means all I can do is a skirmish, which is not going to work for me. So we're not doing that. So what are we going to do? New plan. I'll activate Davis. He can move three units by strategic move. We will, we will use, we will take Bobby Lee, and we will use the railroad and get him down to West Point. Um, that'll mean for the next turn, I can use his leadership to actually move, um, move what? What does that mean I'm going to be able to do with that? Let me think about this for a second. And you know what? It's still a good idea. We'll get uh, we'll get Lee down there. So that was one block. Two other blocks. We're going to move these two guys again uh, across clear uh, terrain here. So meaning that the next turn I can actually move two blocks across this hex side and two blocks across that hex side. Yeah, or even across force hex side you can move two in in mud. Okay. So that's going to be on that side of the board and. If we recall, I have to, uh, Jefferson Davis has to lose a step and he can now be deactivated. That's what we can do. So let's have a quick look over here. I think we'll activate Longstreet and we will do a, a skirmish. So these two guys, some cavalry and an infantry will, will attack here a new market and Longstreet will move as well and he'll He'll deactivate right away. Nothing else is going to happen here. So we will do a attack. So the uh, defender gets to go first. It's again just based on two blocks. Skirmish. Union rolls uh, four and a five, so there's nothing. Confederates can roll uh, two. Nothing. They immediately have to retreat. Okay, and that's and that's that. There's nothing else for the Confederacy to do. So now it's up to the Union to decide what they're going to do. Okay, so the Union actually has to do something. They have to actually take a point. So I, I think I'm actually going to have to do... I'm going to have to move some guys out of Monroe to see if I can slowly make my way to take perhaps West Point. I might have the numbers. I'm not sure. So I'm going to activate Butler. Um... Oh, this is terrible. Butler has a command range of zero, so he can only command the guys in, in Monroe, which kind of sucks. Uh, so, what is that going to mean? And these are all ones. He can move two guys across the 
woods. He'll do that. He'll move himself and then back down to a strength of one. And he'll and he'll deactivate. So nothing else. <laughs> so that was a lot of nothing. That was a lot of nothing over there. Okay, so what do we got over here to see if we can take Fredericksburg back? Now we've lost Lee over there, right? Well, we know that he's moved out. Uh, well, I guess we would have known. So let's... Who do we got here? I've got Fremont and I've got Mead. Mead's got a strength of two. Let's, um, let's activate Mead. And let's move... Everybody can move one hex in mud. We do need to check out the bridge rule because to get across into Fredericksburg, mud bridge, two, two units. See, that doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't work. I, I need three at least to attack. So what are we going to do? Let's do something else. Well, let's figure this out. Let's move. He's got a range of two. <laughs> let's move two across this bridge because we're going to try to force them out of there so we can gain position. Let's move these two guys as well. And then... Oh, think about this. Think about this. That's just with uh, Mead, right? Let's move these two guys across that forest. Problematic now, because I still have... Hang on. Okay, let's... Oh. You know what? We couldn't do that. He was at strength two. I was going to have to use this guy, who only had... Yeah, sorry, let's take that back. He couldn't do that because it would have kill, killed him. He can't limit himself. We would have to do it on Fremont, who could command people in his hex and the neighboring hex. So that move was allowed. This was not because he didn't have the range. So he's done that. What are we going to do with you? What are we going to do with you? Let's... So if we've, if we've activated Fremont, and we've done, let's say we will move the leader there... We'll continue to do all that, but I think what we're going to have to do is then activate Lincoln and do four strategic moves. These are not great. Whoa, because that's totally left Fremont. You know what? And Fremont's going to have to then... He's going to have to move too. He's going to move as well. Who cares about this? There's, no, there's nothing going on there. But we've left a bit of an opening here, which is not great. Although we don't have any leader other than Jefferson Davison down there, so that's it's probably not that much of a risk. Let's though. We've activated Lincoln. We can move four blocks. Let's do. Let's do what, guys? Let's do what? Let's move uh, strategically on the rail here, like that. And and we know something's going on over there. So let's see. What, oh my gosh, these are all one blocks, right? Forgot we didn't have a lot of strength. What else? Um, well, I guess we're going to have to move somebody. Okay, well, let's move... Um, you know what? Let's move the Baltimore guy. It's just a garrison unit. Boom. We'll move him there. So now we've done all of our uh, strategic move with Lincoln. And... So we've got one skirmish to do. So the Rebels get to go first. One dice. They get nothing. Uh, the Union. Oh, look at that. They roll a one. So... The infantry goes to two, and they have to retreat, and he'll, he has to retreat that way. Okay, so that's, that's done that. Now, we'll see who goes again, who, who gets initiative. Ooh, Confederates only have six. Union, seven. Okay, so the Union is going to go again. Oh, we're in a bad situation here because I've moved all these blocks now. I've only got three blocks that can move. Oh, geez, we're running out of we're running out of time here with our leaders. I realize this is the last opportunity for everything. He can't activate anymore. What do we got here? Fremont can't activate anymore. <laughs> it's only Lincoln. 
It's only linked and that can activate. So let's look at this. That means I can move three blocks somewhere. And it's dry. It's mud, rather. Oh, this is terrible. And if I move Lincoln now, or sorry, if I activate him and use three, three blocks, then I'll get another opportunity to do two blocks, and that'll be it. That is not good at all. Okay, I gotta pause. I gotta think about this. Okay, this is uh, a little crazy. I wasn't expecting to do this, but here's what I think I'm going to have to do. Activate Lincoln, because I can't activate any of the leader. He can move three blocks. I've got to go for Fredericksburg for the, for the win. This is so bad because the strength of these units. Okay, we will put two infantry units across this, this bridge. And we will take, I can only move one more block. So let's move, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We'll move this infantry unit across that wood hex. That's all I can do. It's coming down to this one attack. He loses a step and he deactivates. Yeah, that's, I just can't think of anything else. Okay, I'm going to set it up on the battle board. Let's, let's fight it out. I think it's all coming down to this battle. Okay, so here we are set up um, on the battle board. And you can see uh, I've got my two entrenchments. And I've decided to go this way with my forces for whatever reason. So the attackers, the Union, and they're going to start. Now, normally what these guys would probably do is, is engage. But we're kind of we're kind of low on strength. So I'm going to do nothing with this Union this first term. You might think that's risky, but I think it's probably going to be sound. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to immediately reinforce from the adjacent hexes into my reserve. So that's essentially the attacker's first battle turn. So now what's the Confederacy going to do? Well, we're not going to get out of our trenches or do anything. So I think what we will do is we will go uh, two dice from the artillery at F1 because it's long range. No hits, nothing there. And then they can bring in across this bridge where they have an adjacent uh, hex because it's mud. It's mud, it's, you can only bring in one. So we'll bring in this one infantry guy right there, okay? Okay, so that ends the first, that was dawn attack. Now we are onto the morning attack or the morning part of the battle. So now what are we gonna do? We, should we start doing the engagements? What are we going to do here? Who's the weakest? Oh, how many more guys do I got to bring into this attack? Um, this is it. The Union doesn't have anybody else adjacent to bring in. So what I got on the board is what I got on the board. This might be a little bit risky, but I think what we'll do is we will go engage with these infantry here. These cavalry will do an outflank, which I got to roll for, and they'll be the only ones who get to shoot. Oh. Man, this is a tough one. Hmm. Yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do, and... You know what? We're <laughs> we are going to we're going to move these artillery to engage too. I think we have to. Okay. So to roll the outflank um, on the entrenchment, there is a modifier for that. Outflank roll is plus one against entrenchment units against entrenchment units. So if I roll six, it becomes a seven, which also means you can do the outflank, no problem. Um, but it's still a minus one for the actual attack. So I'm at F1, one dice roll. It's a, it's a one and I, I don't even get a one. So that's, that's fine. So anyways, these guys are now all engaged for next turn. And I've got no more reinforcements to bring in. Okay. So it's the second turn, battle turn. 
The Union has to do uh, morale, but I'm in entrenchment, so uh, it's a one or a two. Five is good. First guy, second guy is fine too. Those guys are good. The middle guy, it's three. He has to disengage, and he has to go right back to the reserve. And basically, he can't be used this battle turn now. That he's, I'll just put him over there. Okay, now we can do fire movement. Let's do the artillery. Two. Um, actually, that's a wasted shot because it's the 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 guy he's shooting at is a one anyways. But if he actually that no 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 if I roll a one, it for he can't kill him, but it forces him to the reserve, which will then it won't force a route because I haven't crossed this line yet. But let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Nothing. Nothing happens. Okay. So then let's do this. These guys will engage, okay, or outflank. These guys will fight. Let's do the cavalry first. He's going to do F1. Nothing. There are the infantry, who's only got a one, he's going to melee, which is risky. If I roll a six, he's dead. Roll a four. He's not dead, but he still misses. We've got to roll an outflank roll, um... Which he does, four, five, or six. He's done the outflank. Let's just make sure I got that right. Dun, 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 dun. Outflank. Yes, roll four, four plus. So he's outflanked, and because he's infantry, he can melee this outflank thing, which he's going to do. 2D F3. Wow. Okay, look at that. One on two. So the two hits on the Union. Okay. So now we're all engaged there. We've done nothing else. This guy was out of play because he had to disengage. I can bring one more guy in across that bridge because it's mud terrain or mud season, whatever. That's it. So now we're on to the afternoon. The Union, you've got two more chances to do this. Okay, Union. No, he's not engaged, so he doesn't have to roll morale. He's not engaged. These guys are engaged. What are we going to do? Okay. Because the artillery moved to engage, they're only firing it on F1. So let's do that. Nothing. The cavalry... Sorry, that was two dice. He should have only rolled one dice because of the entrenchment. The cavalry, one dice, F1. Oh my gosh, he got a hit. Okay, so that infantry is now down to one. And now we'll do these Union infantry. Again, it's one dice because there's an entrenchment. He will melee at one, two, or three. He rolls a five. Nothing. Wow. Okay. You know what? I, I think I think we have to engage. Just in case it goes poorly over there. That'll be a bit of risk there too. That's the end of his turn. He can reinforce no more. Okay. Now it's the Confederates. They gotta roll for morale, but they got a plus one. Oh, this first guy, his morale fails. He has to disengage. Let's put him over there onto the right side. Next guy. Four, he's fine. Third guy. Oh, he fails morale too. Oh my gosh. Okay, what to do? <sighs> Holy cow. This is how these battles can get pretty exciting. Okay, just for fun, let's roll uh, F2 on the artillery here. Or F1, rather. Nothing. Miss, 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 miss. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, it's both, it's simultaneous fire and movement, so let's figure this out. I've got two guys that can do something. This guy's going to... This guy's going to outflank. This guy is going to move to engage, just in case we lose that, so we still got something else. So let's roll the outflank roll. He's fine. He does the outflank. He can now do a melee attack, okay, or he can just do a normal attack, F2. Let's just do an F2 attack, because it's getting kind of dicey. He rolls a 2. Brilliant. Okay, he rolls a 2. So, let's take it off of this the artillery, guys. are going to be useless now, anyways. Let's do a, a normal F2 attack with that infantry. Nothing. Miss. Okay. <laughs> this is... I'm going to risk this. The Confederates are going to do... they got to attack anyways. We're going to do a melee attack. If I roll two sixes, the Confederates are done. Okay, I rolled a three and a two. Which means the Union is dead 
and it forces a route. This guy's dead. This guy loses, loses. This guy's dead. And then these guys, I got to go back to the strategic board. I'll show you in a second, and they will just retreat across the bridge. Holy cow, that's... um. That's something. You never know what's going to happen on these battle ports. Um, yeah. Okay. I got to pause. Okay. So I've moved it back from the battle board. And, and so the, the two lone un un units moved across there. And I left a stack in uh, Fredericksburg. They're super weak. But that's all they can do. So that was the Union attack. Okay. So now the... Confederacy, I have, let's see, I will activate Bobby Lee, who's got a range of two. Do I want to do this? Why not? Wow, wow. Do I want to do this? I want to do this. Okay, he's going to move two across there, two across there. He's going to move, oh, he can't even do that. He can't cross that river. Um, let's do extended movement like this. If I roll, uh, what did I do that right? Okay, I just rolled a two. Let's see what that is. Force march is what it is. Confederate one or two. You can move one extra, but you lose a step. I just killed that guy. Okay, that's not good. Okay, so basically I've got four blocks moving to attack Yorkton with no reinforcement. Is there any they're talking to do here? That was with Lee. I could put two. No, I can't. That's that's ridiculous. This is it. Okay, we're gonna go back to this one battle, and this will be it. Um, this will be a difference, though, of whether. You know what? The Confederacy is going to get a marginal victory regardless, because at the end of this, because they've hung on so long, they're going to get a point. We'll see if we can get them two points in this last battle. Let's see what happens. This is going to be super pathetic. Um, okay, so here we set up. I've put the cavalry and a garrison unit over here on the right flank, and a garrison unit in the middle, and some artillery in on the left flank. Uh, the Union is super strong. <laughs> it's... Let's just do it anyways. Okay, so we're going to engage. Boom. That's And, and we're going to fire over here. It's two dice because he's got an entrenchment, so it's two F1. Nothing. That's the Confederate turn. The first battle turn. Okay. The Union. He gets to go four F1 here, which he will do. And he gets a hit. Take it from the strongest one. No other fighting over there. He will move to He won't even do an outflank. He's just going to move to engage. Okay? Boom. That's it. Okay. Confederacy. Turn two. <laughs> Let's do the artillery. Two dice. Oh, I got a hit. Okay. No, there you go. All right. It's four dice F1 on these guys. Garrison and the cavalry. Oh, I got a hit. How about that? Crazy. What's going to happen here is we're going to run out of time. Okay, Union, 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 um, Union Infantry, 3D, they're going to melee, so they're going to do three F3s, one hit, let's take that out of, I don't know, the garrison guy, okay, and then they've got 3D F1 for the garrison guy, nothing. And he can reinforce this guy from Fort Monroe for fun. Whatever. Okay, afternoon battle turn. <laughs> He's got to roll morale. He makes it. He rolls F1. Nothing. And the cavalry roll F1. Nothing. Artillery over here. F1. Nothing. Okay, you see where this is going? No reinforcements, no nothing. Okay, so now it's the Union. F, F3 again, melee. Two hits. One. And well, I guess it's the garrison who's gone. And the garrison unit. F1. Nothing. 
that's it. Last battle turn before night, dusk for the Confederacy. F1. No, sorry, morale, morale. He makes morale, so he is F1. Nothing. Artillery, two dice. Nothing. Okay, it's all going to happen right here now. The Union will do another melee. Right, they get they get two hits. Boom. Kills this guy. Force. Oh, he's not. He hasn't forced a row because he hasn't moved over there yet. So that's the end of his turn. We're now on to the night turn. Because the Confederacy does not have a leader, they can withdraw or, or retreat. And they'll basically head back to Moody's Wharf right here. So they didn't. It wasn't a victory, it wasn't an overall loss. And then uh, these Union guys will stay in York. They can regroup too. I'll move a couple guys back into Monroe. That's fine. Okay, so now when I look at uh, the leaders on the board now, because um, that was Davis, he had done his thing. I don't have any more leaders that can actually activate. So, because they're all at their end of their... They're all at the end of their strengths. Which means that it's a pass-pass, which ends the... Uh, again, the quarter. And we come down to victory points. Nobody took any... Any... Uh, new victory points. So, the Confederates get one extra point just because they're still here. Which means... They got a marginal victory. Wow, that was <laughs> that was something. I gotta say, I uh, I wasn't sure, you know, what was gonna happen this last turn, and and I guess that's why you know that's why this is such a great game. Um, yeah, so we would do a supply check to see if anybody was in supply, but everybody was in supply. If you if you weren't, then you could lose uh, steps. You would do a leader change too. This is an interesting kind of rule that. Um, you basically roll, and it, there's an effect of where you are on the scoreboard. If you're winning, I think you get uh, a minus die roll, and if you're losing, you get a plus die roll to determine whether or not you change leaders. So if you do force a, a leader change, you basically grab from a, a draw pile where you've got a couple of leaders, and each scenario tells you what leader is available. And whether it's a minor or a major leader, you have to replace whatever leader you've got on the board with that major or minor leader um, at the same strength. So that was kind of... I had to do that a couple of times. Uh, other couple thing I want to mention is I never did uh, emancipation. There was a rule where you could. Um, what am I trying to say here? The Confederates had an option to give up. Uh, I think two victory points, uh, and then they can they can draft a bunch of guys. I never did that. Uh, and it, what it was as soon as emancipation. Read the historical context was when Abe Lincoln brought in uh, the Emancipation uh, Proclamation, then um, I, there was a huge surge of people who joined the Confederacy. So, so that's what that identifies. So I will say that I had a lot of fun with this game. I really had to plan out my attacks. Um, uh, and, and even when I planned them out, they, those hexide limits would creep up on me and affect the reinforcements in the battles, which we saw in sort of this last iteration that I did. So even when I had big battles and I thought I had good odds, it, it was never a sure thing because it would come down to what would happen on the battle board. And I think that's the fun um, part about this. I, what, you know, I have a, uh, an old edition of Napoleon by uh, Columbia Games. Uh, I think it's actually got the Gamma, Gamma 2 games on it. But, um, and I struggled with that because it was my first time with the, the rules about the battle board thing. And, and again, since then, I don't have the new copy. I, I want to get it. But... Um, but I learned a few things online about how to how to do battle ports and whatnot. This has done really well. How they explain it. This one and Sam Grant, you know, definitely. I like how they explain uh, the stuff uh, uh, for battle boards and how to do those individual battles. I um, I think I've said this already. I I think I would favor Bobby Lee over Sam Grant, but now. But I want to play them both, <laughs> and I kind of want to have. Both of them set up at the same time and see if I can do some strategic movement and see what that would look like and see what a big, uh, you know, do the big campaign. It would take forever probably, but but I don't know. I, w I want to give that a shot. So anyways, um, that's probably it for me. Uh, I pulled out East Front, so I think I'm probably going to look at that just because I, 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 
I'm still on the sort of an east front kick. Uh, you know, it's a like a, an old edition of the Columbia one. I'll try that. And I got to dig through some of my Avalon Hill stuff and see because I there's some things that I want to play. Uh, I might even want to play one of the old simple Waterloo uh, a game from the 70s. I got some new counters for it, so that might be kind of neat to check those out. M maybe I'll just do a look at the components or something like that if I don't play it. That might be kind of fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, leave me some comments if you like, and uh, take care.